It's time for Pure Performance. Get your stopwatches ready. It's time for Pure Performance with Andy Grabner and Brian Wilson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another stellar episode of Pure Performance. We have a very, very, very super awesome, amazing show today. Although, as Andy points out, I say that kind of stuff about every show, right, Andy? Exactly. You're a fortune teller. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. And the uh, the reason I say we have a great show today is we have our good friend Mark Tomlinson back. Uh, hello, Mark. You are a person, a human being, right? You have... Um, uh, lot of biological systems within you correct <laughs> we're not talking to a computer is what i'm getting at right no that's, this is this is not the computer simulated mark tomlinson this excellent real excellent. in the flesh and uh mark mark is a uh, a friend of andy and i's right we we, we go back quite a long time and yes. uh you are you are our inspiration for starting this podcast and you have a you have a some a little small podcast of, of your own don't you Actually, I have some interesting news. Um, the Perf Bites podcast is now branched into three, um, and Andy's joined Howard. We're trying to figure out if we can get more of our uh, performance engineering cafe, cafe going. And the News of the Dam podcast has taken off with James has taken that and run with it. And then uh, starting in the new year, I'm actually thinking about doing my own new podcast called Mark on Task. Wow. What about, what about, on, what about on the Mark no, it's actually, it's a name of a painting that uh, my wife oh, Martha did. So nice. I kind of named it after that. And you, you know, I do have to say, I do like her paintings. I, I see every once in a while when they go up there. Yeah, uh, it's awesome. And if, if I had disposable income, I would um, purchase one. But, yeah. Yeah. So that that's coming. A lot, this, this, the podcasting stuff is taking off. You guys are doing really well. I, I'm really happy for you. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, well, I wanted to introduce you quickly because I figured you could probably chime in on this. Um Andy, well, first of all, you're where? Where are you at right now, Mark? You're well, at I'm in Dallas. I'm in Dallas at SDPCon. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and Andy, you are at uh, Java Java One. Java One in San Francisco, except Java with the R in the end because I'm you know, Bostonian what, what now. What is that? Is that the Java runtime? Java, yes, yeah, it is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, it's an interesting show, and obviously, you know, I think it's uh, since Oracle took over. And it's uh, side by side with Oracle World. It feels Java One is a small conference next to Oracle World. Even though I think there's still like five thousand people at the conference, it feels tiny compared to the fifty thousand Oracle po Oracle people in the city. Uh, but it's fun. Good stuff happening. You know, it's it's very interesting because Mark Hurd recently was on the record. I think he was on one of the finance shows, talking about how the fact that you you know with Oracle you don't even need an IT staff anymore. It's just it's all in the cloud magically. Yeah. So why is the, the, all those people are probably at Oracle World looking for jobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, sure. I mean, the, the, the cloud is obviously is very ominous here. It's like um, they are, I mean, if you walk over to the Oracle World part of the conference, it's, uh, it's everything is in the cloud. It's the largest, fastest growing, best cloud in the world as they, as they sell it here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> is there, it's, is there like a, it's, it's attractive. Is there a golden yeah. escalator to get into the cloud? <laughs> a golden <laughs> escalator. I like that. Forget yeah. those beanstalks. That's the yeah. old school. Yeah. <laughs> the, and, and you're staying at an Air Airb, right? I'm, there's I'm there's staying, no breakfast. It's just the Airb. Exactly. Well, uh, so it's an interesting. I had a very good experience last year taking an Airbnb. I had my own apartment. Everything was nice and cool and. Like uh, a, a third of the price of a regular hotel because I just refused to pay four hundred dollars for a night, even though it's not me paying, but my company. But still, so this time I thought I'd do the same, and I found an awesome apartment, and it's still awesome. But I share the apartment with three other software engineers who live here, and they uh, they actually camp out in the living air in the living room uh, like with on, tents uh, on the couches. Okay. Uh, but it's really cool. Actually, it's an it's a fun it's an interesting experience. They I think they code during the day. They play video games at night and uh, have a little different uh, schedule during the day. So when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> they're fast asleep. Uh, and when I actually am done with all my meetings with Europe and I actually get 
out at nine o'clock here to my conference. They're still asleep. Um, <laughs> it's but it's a fun experience. There's some cool guys. Oh, so, uh, so some is really, it, really is cool it all guys. like Silicon Valley then? It's a little bit like silly. It feels like Silicon Valley. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> So it is a good experience, and um, you know, it's. I definitely can encourage everybody if you want to, not only save your company some money, even though maybe nobody cares about that fact, but it's a good experience. That right. you meet people. Um, the guy, one of the guys who is actually hosting me, he used to work for Uber, uh, and now he's working for another startup. So it's very interesting chats that we have. Very cool stuff. Mark, what what do you want to talk about today, Mr. Mark, our guest? You're awfully let's, quiet. Let's let's rant about DevOps. Great. Let's rant about DevOps. That's yeah, great. because yeah. Um, I see I see a, a sort of a generational or even a cultural split happening in the performance world um, over this funky thing called DevOps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what is that you say? And you're on the you obviously are on the old side of the generation, but probably oh, th- acting. Th- oh, thanks. But probably Thank acting you. like the new side. Old man acting like a kid. Do you wear a sideways baseball hat when you go to performance test? And some well, first of all, I will agree that some people need to dress their age because you see those old people like dressing like youngsters, and it's it's not that to me. That's just you look silly. I is don't hot, think I is do hot that. topic is hot sto- is hot topic still a hip store for youngsters? Are they wearing like all the goth gear and? I, I don't know anything about that. Okay, I'm an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think, it, 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 to be honest, it's um, like anyone in technology, let's just compared to other other disciplines or other industries. I mean, even technology, if you aren't keeping up on the latest, greatest stuff, it, like every three months, every six months, I mean, you're, pr- you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to be obsolete in your job in about a year. Even if you're on the same, we're just talking about updates in iOS, you know, mm-hmm. the whole game, the whole platform, everything can change. What you thought was a valuable test technique or a valuable way to use a tool or uh, maybe even getting stuck in a tool. You know, the idea that you stagnate happens in technology in, you know, 10 times faster than any other industry. And so I think when we talk about, uh, you know, changes to tools or changes to platform technology, speed of computing and performance. Obviously, the CPU, uh, the scale is is gone off the charts in terms of memory, uh, in terms of CPU. And, and now with SSDs and storage is really interesting. You know, you have to keep up. And so the idea of sort of being an old guy, quote unquote, an old and like, well, I don't know what this DevOps is. Where's my where's my gatekeeping? I, I get to stop a release, don't I? <laughs> I, I, I get to raise my hand and stop a release. I used to love doing that, though. <laughs> well, sh- sure. There's a certain amount of power, and 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 maybe your ego needs get met, you know, kind of thing. There's some other agendas happening, whereas I just see people who are like morphing into mob programming, into continuous delivery, uh, and all these kinds of things. They have less. There's less in their culture, so to speak. They really do interact differently. They have different values. They, those needs are not part of the equation. It's like, hey, what can, I can, what can I do to contribute to everything we push out the door to make it better? Yeah. And, and who cares what I'm getting out of it? Who cares if it's the tools that I'm stuck on? So they're, to me, they're, I'm not seeing like two or three or four different quote unquote camps. I see kind of classic old school waterfall mm-hmm. style legacy tools. And I see a bunch of new kids. And age age aside, right? I'm just saying new techniques and new disciplines, yeah. and especially DevOps kind of taking off. It's a really interesting cultural experience to see these different groups. I think so too. And actually, um, what I see even I see them in an even bigger extreme. I would say, and not only with our companies and clients that we talk to, also within Dynatrace. So what we actually did. And that's the same what I saw, like last week I was in South America speaking with banks, and I think I mentioned mm-hmm. this also with the latest recording with, with Anita, that I, I see these companies that try to that need to reinvent themselves, um, kind of breaking off and starting their own team that is working in the new way, call it the DevOps way, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. They're building new teams from the ground up on new stack, new technology, new spirit, new culture, and then they let them run for a while to prove out that this is the best, this is the way we want to build software for the future. 
and totally disconnected from everything else the company's been doing. I was even meeting with a client in South America, and I was in the morning. I was meeting with their, let's quote-unquote, old school, and the building was different. The people were different. It was just they, it was just old school. Yeah. And these people had no clue about the new, school, the new kids. And then I went in the afternoon to the new kids, new building, glass palace, uh, everything open, very cool, st- you know, like pair programming. It was like I'm walking into a different world, yeah. yet it's the same company, and these two teams don't even know about each other. And really? Yeah, because the reason why it was, was interesting, so my girlfriend, she used to work in Chile, and she has a friend who now works for the quote-unquote old part of that company, and I told right. him the night before, I'm going to meet your innovation team. And he said, well, what are you talking about? There is no innovation team. And I said, well, <laughs> I'm going to this place. And he said, well, dude, that's, that's not the location that we have. And I said, well, <laughs> let's see tomorrow. And then the next day I get there. Was the meeting at midnight? <laughs> no, it was not at midnight. No, it was really. Right. Yeah, it was not on platform nine three quarters. No, it is really. <laughs> it was, it was, it was amazing. And so, and the same thing just happened. So, so Gabi, my girlfriend, she works uh, for Santander for the Spanish bank, and I keep asking her, "What is Santander doing innovation wise?" And she said, "Yeah, I'm not really sure." Over the last couple of months, I keep keep pinging her, and yesterday she sends me an email and says, no, "Guess what? We just got out of an all hands meeting." And our central organized IT department in Spain just announced that they've been working on the next new platform for a while now, just basically, you know, figuring out on their own without telling anybody else. And now they're going to push it out into other areas. Yes. So and, very- and, and then, of course, fire everyone else in the old building. Well, well that's an interesting thing you say there, right? Because, Andy, if we go back, well, was that the, was that the uh, before I take it to where I was going to go, Andy, what was... Were they planning on firing everybody or not? No, 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 not okay. at all. They just basically tried to figure out how they, are they going to build software in the next five to ten years? What are the new apps going to be built on? And obviously the, the transition is going to be interesting. There will still be the old, quote-unquote, old folks will have to keep the old apps alive. They have to figure out how the new apps that are built cloud-native how they will interact with the old apps, because especially with banks, right? They have the mainframe mm-hmm. systems that will still be there, so they have to be some, they have to be some interaction, some APIs. But um, over over the course of the time, more and more of these older legacy apps will be ported or rebuilt. Actually, I believe, mm-hmm. with the new technology, the, with the new culture in mind. And I think either some people can make the switch over, or they will be have to find another job. Could be, yeah. right? Right. Um, and, yeah. and Andy, that's what. We- a few episodes back when we were talking with uh, Adam from from Capital One, um, it was a very similar story, right? They decided to go from monolith to microservice or, you know, uh, whatever you want to call that whole mm-hmm. process, you know, just the whole continuous delivery. And it, they had QA teams, performance test teams, load test teams, developers, you know, all these other kind of legacy teams. And Mark, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this more for you and for anybody who haven't hasn't listened yet, but to that episode... But the difference that they had there is in order to make that work, which is where a lot of this issue comes up from, is they had a, a support from the top to say, mm-hmm. we're going to switch over to this new way because we get it now. We, you know, As a company, and I, and I believe uh, Adam said Capital One's new edict was we're not a bank company, we're a software company now, right? Uh, <clears throat> so their whole concept there was, we're going to support you. We're going to give you what you need to make that transition. So if you're one of these older school people, you know, we're going to help you learn the new way. I and mean, you, you're really only going to find yourself out. I mean, I'm, I'm putting words in his mouth at this point, but the general idea is you, you're only going to find yourself out of a job if you don't adapt and you're going to have support to adopt, uh, you know, adopt this new process, though. So that, that I think is. A- so what I like, what I like with Capital One is that they actually give people the chance to level up, right? I mean, to actually learn the new ways of developing software. And most people, I think, take the chance. Uh, some may are too resistant to change, and these are the ones that unfortunately will not have a future, but um, at least not with, in the current job uh, or in the, in the new challenges. But I think overall the transition is coming. Some new teams, like with all the examples that I heard, are lucky enough to be on the new cool teams right from the beginning. And the more these teams show successes, I think the more of the legacy apps or traditional apps 
and the teams that support them will move over to the new devops way. Uh, I think that's what's going to happen. I, th- I think some people will move over, Andy. To be honest, what I'm seeing is there are the, yeah, hey, I, I'm willing to, you know, 